My name is Isaac Irvine. Oh, wait, I have a clicker. Here we go. All right, so uh, this is the only slide that has my Twitter. This is the only slide that has my Twitter handle on it. Uh, my recommendation, if you want to tweet, I love it. Get really derpy faces that I make and tweet those ones because, like, that's really embarrassing for me, and I like it. Um, and so that's the only one. Take a picture if, if you can't remember, or just go, hey, what's your Twitter? And I'll just yell it out at you. So th this is, I work at GoDaddy, like we just talked about. Um, this, this is my job. It's, my job is to help our employees get better at their personal brand and help uh, get them out speaking and talking about what we do at GoDaddy. We're a big company. Um, and sometimes it's easy to get stuck in an, an echo chamber where you don't share all the stuff you know. Uh, so it's my job to help us get out and get our employees comfortable talking about what they do and sharing what they're doing at work. So I do this all the time. <coughs> This is another picture here. This is my family. Uh, this has nothing to do with my presentation other than uh, this, this is our Christmas card, and we got it printed, and we got them addressed, and I forgot to mail them. <laughs> so I told my wife, everyone is still going to see our Christmas picture, I promise. So every presentation for the next year is going to have this picture. So <laughs> I'm going to stand over here real quick. All right, so th this here is Bodie. This is Aiden. They're identical twins, so it's really hard for me. They're 10, and I'm still not used to <laughs> looking at them. But um, this is Aiden. My wife is the boss of the house. Uh, this is me being flighty. <laughs> and this is the other boss of the house, Taryn. Um, literally, I won the name game because I wanted to be able to hold up a sign that said Taryn it up with whatever she does, whether it's like a sports thing or like a, a spelling bee. <laughs> and I sold it to my wife, and she's like, that's a great name. So I w I'm really excited <laughs> about that. And there she is just having fun. So if I look familiar, uh, I, I was in a video that uh, you may have saw, you may have seen, on Facebook. Um, it's been translated into, gosh, uh, six different languages that I know of. Um, and the quote, have I seen you before? That's literally every time I get in an Uber, apparently I have a, a very memorable face because of tattoos and beards, and they'll say, you look really familiar. And I'll say, do you have Facebook? And they'll go, oh, and this is all I see, because I'm looking at them from the back seat, but you see them go, oh, yeah, OK. So uh, we're going to talk about viral videos today um, and, and how they happen and things that you can do to leverage what you see in most viral videos to benefit your business and, and promote it. So. The first question you want to ask yourself when you're thinking about making a video uh, is, why do we share stuff? What makes you share something on a social, like on social media? What makes you share something that you see when it when it pops across your screen? Our video here uh, was actually a complete accident. So what had happened is uh, I was getting ready to speak in in uh, uh, Atlanta, and I tell my wife. We're upstairs. I have to separate my twins because I have twins. I separate them because at homework, they compete over everything. So if one finishes homework before the other one, the other one is like, I'm smarter than you today. And so it's just like this rude thing that goes on between my sons, and I can't get them to not compete with each other. So we separated them. The other boy comes up. I'm with Bodie. And uh, my wife says, like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? I was like, I got to get a haircut. He tells me, I want to cut my hair, too. And I'm thinking, bro, we've been co like we've been growing your hair out for like a year and a half. I have to get up extra early in the morning to comb it because he's a, they're they're like ten. They're well at the point of this they were nine, and so I wake up every day with just this rat's nest of hair that I'm combing out every morning. So I'm like, bro, you're so close. I've been committed to this for almost a year. What's going on? <laughs> and he goes, I don't want to talk about it. And I'm like, come on, man, we got to talk about what happened. He's like, I don't remember. So the, what I, as, as his dad, what I know about him is he loves Minecraft and he loves YouTubers. Anyone have kids that Dan TDM? Right? Right? Yes. Stampy the Love Cat or whatever that guy is? Oh. So I know they love YouTube. So I tell him, if I make a video, will you, do you want to talk about it? And he goes, yeah, I will. So... And this is the part where, uh, this is where I, I come clean. 
I make videos of my kids all the time and tell them I post it on social media and I don't because they don't have social media and they have no idea. So it's the only way I'm like, dude, can you jump your bike off the curb? I don't feel like it. I'll make a video. Right? They're in it at that point. They're committed. They're doing backflips like Crew Jones on Hill Track. Rad fans, got one. Thank you. It's a BMX movie. Um, so anyway, I start recording. I have no idea what's happening. I don't know if he was, like, punched, if someone made fun of him. I don't know what happened. So I just grab, literally grab the phone, this phone here, and I hold it out, and I start recording. Tell me what happened. And the, the emotion that comes through in the video is 100% is like me being shocked at what he's saying because all I could think of is like, did, did someone hurt you at school, physically hurt you? Then I find out someone had just said, like, you look like a girl, right? Not a bad thing, but when you're eight, it's basically just cutting your entire identity out from underneath you. So you hear us have a conversation about what it's like to be unique and how special that is. Um, he says some at the very end. He's like, it's good to be unique and be yourself. And I start to cry. I turn off the video. <laughs> That's enough because I knew what happened. And I never planned on posting this. So I, I tell him, hey, you're good. Send him off to take a shower. Show my wife the video. I think we're all done. He comes back just dripping. Looks like uh, Splinter from like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And he's like, can I read the comments on that video? Right? Oh, that's what I did. That was exactly, I made that noise. Oh. So I look at my wife. I was like, and she goes, and I'm like, okay, I'll post it. Now, the typical stuff I post is like Star Wars, small business stuff, and GoDaddy. That's really about, like, talk about what I did. At, I don't, I'm not very exciting. I'm a dad. Like, if I live, like, if we make a map and I live, like, this is where I live, I don't travel that far outside of it. True story. If it's outside my five miles around my house, I don't go there. So we're, we're kicking back. I post it. I think I'm going to get about five comments. Like, CJ, I worked with CJ. I thought CJ would comment. She did. Um, someone say, like, Thor has cool hair. Yay. And they did. And I read this, this, I read the comments to my son. And uh, it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. This is the only part where I get, I get a little emotional is because I got to see him get his self-esteem back. And it's, it's the craziest thing you'll ever see in your life because you, he's deflated and he's sad and you can see it. And then reading these comments from y'all made him feel good again. I was like, you're awesome, dude. Go to bed. I locked my phone, put it on the headboard, and that's it, right? Wake up the next morning, and I go to scroll. And usually I scroll about that far, like maybe two thumbs. That's it. That morning, it was like, and it just kept going, right? And all I could think of was like, oh, God, oh, God, God, no, God, no. So I look at, the, I look at what everyone's talking about, and I see 14,000 views on my video, right? I don't have 14,000 friends ever in my entire life, ever. How did this happen? So I panic. I yell downstairs, uh, babe. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, 14,000 people saw that video. And then I hear, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Because really what I'm saying is 14,000 people have looked at our bathroom. <laughs> so, uh, but one cool thing about I'll just <laughs> my favorite part. So if you look right there, that, that like the, the shower head, it's white because it was super cheap. And it's my master bedroom, my master bath. No one's going to see it but me and my wife. So that was like eight bucks. The one that matched was like 40. Um, also, the cool thing you'll learn from the internet is if you didn't do something right, they're really helpful. <laughs> so apparently I have the Teflon tape wrapped wrong. I didn't know there was a direction. It's not on the label. So I wrapped the Teflon wrong, so someone let me know. Thanks. That was you. So back to this. Why do we share stuff? Um, we share what's it, we share what we think is important, right? We share what we can relate to. People watch and share video content. That's why it's important. If you look at 
text posts aren't, aren't going viral like they used to. It's video, maybe it's a meme, but video is king. And we'll talk about that in a minute with the algorithms and why social media wants you to use video. <clears throat> but back to the question, why do, we, why do we share stuff? We like stories. As people, we love stories. We share things we can relate to. So when you're planning your video, these are all things you want to think about when you're marketing a video to your clientele or to your customers or potential customers. We share what we can relate to. Um, in our video, if, if, has anyone, has you guys seen my video? No? A hundred million people have seen it. And I don't mean that like in a braggadocious way. I'm just saying like when I add it up, it, they, like I have heart palpitations right now saying a hundred million people have seen my bathroom. Because that's all I think about. When you see this video, you see like Enduring Dad and, and my son, and I see a fluorescent green gym tank, like, like a bro tank, with my hair really wrong in our bathroom uh, without a proper shower curtain because I literally just put a sheet up there and sewed it because I didn't know how to sew. I learned how to do that. And um, went down and bought some blue dye and dyed the, the curtain. So now it has like this weird like Arizona sun bleach thing. It gets better and better the more I tell you this. And so it's very, it's very like traumatic for us to see this. It does. It does. And that's what, when I see all the mistakes, what you see is reality because it's relatable, right? It's a dad struggling with his son. We've all been there. We're all, we have somebody that we love that we want to have a better experience than they're having right now. Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's a family member, whoever it is. We've all been in this situation where we gave advice. So that's why it's relatable, right? We share things that inspire us. So think about that. When you're planning your video, it's the inspirational things that we like. And we share things that are emotional, things that make us cry, make us pause, make us think. These are things that we, we talk about. And I'll give you some examples. Do you want to remember Nugs for Carter? Yep. Now let's think about this story. We love the underdog. And do you remember what the challenge was? If not, I'll tell you really quick. Um, is anyone familiar with Wendy's Twitter? Have you heard about this? Lit. <laughs> they are ruthless. Like I saw them say, somebody tweeted and said, Wendy's, will you, will you roast me? And they replied, have one of your 12 followers do it. Right? <laughs> From a brand. Right? That just sets the tone for what happened. So Carter, Carter tweets Wendy's, how many retweets do I need to get some free nuggets? And they reply, 17 million. You got to beat Ellen's record when she took a selfie at the Grammys or the Oscars. Which one? Oscars, my bad. <laughs> Who doesn't watch TV? This guy. <laughs> okay. So they lay down a challenge, and he, he tweets back, challenge accepted, consider it done, help me internet. And what do we do? I got your back, dude. Because he's an underdog. I can relate to Carter. I may love Ellen, but I have no idea the kind of lifestyle that Ellen lives. It's not anywhere near mine. But Carter's a high school kid. I've been in high school, and I've wanted free nuggets. I get it. <laughs> right? I don't think Ellen is really stressing on cash. So I'm on team Carter all the way. And guess what? We beat it. Right? We all rallied around Nugs for Carter, and he beat it. I, he, got, he got his nugs. Chewbacca mom. <laughs> right? What did you all just do just now when, I, when you saw her picture? We laughed with her. We're not laughing at her. We're laughing with her. Now, I remember being a kid, if I went into Mervyn's, right? Dated me right there. Who remembers Mervyn's? This is just me. me. All right. Mervyn's was a toy. I'm so old. Mervyn's was a toy store when I used to go there. And I remember walking out with my new Star Wars Luke and the lightsaber that came out of his forearm, and I couldn't wait to get in the car to open it up and start playing right then and there. Chewbacca mom did it, right? She goes into Kohl's, buys this rad mask, opens it, it opens its mouth and makes a chewy sound. She was so excited, she's like, I'm gonna live stream this. She starts live streaming and we loved it. We all watched it and we were like, 
we were like, this is amazing. I shared it. Y'all probably shared it. We all know who she was. But why do we love it? Because we laughed with her. I could relate to her story. So when you're making a video, find a storyline about what you do that everyone can relate to or find something common. The last one, this one isn't as big, but this is a, one of my favorite stories. This young man, uh, is a, he's a senior in high school. He asked uh, a girl that he wanted to go to prom with to prom. She said no. He, is, he has, I want to say he has Down syndrome, and he's on the spectrum. So he was bummed out. Word got around school. She asks him to prom. Right? Gets it on video. Everyone was like, this is amazing. They interview him. The local news comes out, interviews him. Finds out he wants to be a chef when he graduates high school. Sorry. He wants to be a chef. She's just excited to help somebody out and make a better day. So at prom, uh, a, news, a news station got some money together. Uh, he got a scholarship to go to uh, a culinary school. And she got a new Nissan car. Pretty rad, right? Chewbacca mom? I think she, it was like a million dollars in, in, of like stuff, right? Like she got scholarships for her kids. Um, but Disney, right? Disney and Kohl's, they, they load it up. So with that last story, you help the hero of the story achieve their goal, right? So. If in, a, in a Star Wars sense, because I'm super nerdy, always be Yoda, you're not Luke. The, the customer that you serve is the hero of your story. I'm just going to make it super easy, right? You are not the hero. You just do cool stuff that can help your customer, the hero of the story. Got it? That's going to be your best bet for success. You can't plan to make a video go viral. I'm, I'm just going to tell you, like, you can't plan it. You're, what's going to happen? You're going to look desperate if you try and do that. But you can always bet on the odds. And it's just knowing the right stuff that you want to record. If, if I were to trip and fall right now and get back up and start breakdancing, maybe someone is like, you know what? I've seen, I've seen that. It's funny. Wow, that would be really awkward. Look at how they recovered. I'm into it. Share it. That's the way this stuff kind of happens, right? So the number one thing I hear when, when I talk to businesses about making videos is I don't have money for a budget. I don't have anything really nice. I can't do this. I don't have this equipment. Guess what? I didn't either. I didn't. I had an iPhone, not even the good one with like the, 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 the I don't, it wasn't a 10. It was like my regular old phone that had a crack in it. I didn't have like nice studio lighting. I didn't have a microphone. It's me. I didn't even have a selfie stick. It's me. Like, you watch. At the very end, it starts to go down because I'm tired. I'm old. <laughs> so it starts to drop. You don't need all this stuff. And, in fact, the more low-key you make your video, the more I'm going to relate to it, the more I'm going to trust you. If it looks like it's too produced, I'm going to smell it like a burp in a car, and I'm not going to be into it, right? Think about it. There was a uh, – I'm not even going to go there. But just trust me, like, we all understand, right? It looks, it looks weird if it's too overproduced. You don't, you're not buying it. So you already have the tools that you need. And the, the, the big clincher is it's you. You are what is going to make this happen. Your relatability, your product's relatability, your ability to make somebody understand what you're trying to do and, and play the, not play the emotion, but be real about what you're doing. So... My, my first tip is always be yourself. If you try to be what you saw in another video, you're just gonna, you're acting at that point, and unless you're really, really good at it, we're all going to see through it. So don't, it's, it's, you're, you're trying to swim upstream if you're trying to be something that you're not. Just own and embrace what you've, what you've got. Don't let your, how do I say this? Your, if you are, does anyone have, we talked about like earlier, imposter syndrome? Do you ever feel like, man, it's just, I can't do this, this isn't for me? If you're self-taught, guess what? You, you, you doubt yourself. You're just not like, maybe we don't want to talk about it out loud. But you're going to have a lot of imposter syndrome when you're thinking about your video. 
Because the minute it gets hard, you're going to go like, oh, I should hire somebody, which you could, but it's not going to come across as real. No one knows your product and no one knows your service as good as you do. So if you don't remember anything, just take a picture of this and keep it on your phone. You're not beautiful, or you're not perfect, you're beautiful. Sorry, ruin that one. <laughs> Hold up. You're not perfect, you're beautiful. I'll take my glasses off now. Um, because you, you will talk yourself out of everything. You will talk yourself out of doing anything if you're thinking about whatever. If I would have thought about what are people going to think about when they see this stupid green tank top and my hair all wrong. And if you saw the original video, a cat knocked over some shampoo right in the middle of it. True story. And I start crying, which is all of the things that I don't necessarily want the world to meet me as a first time. Like, hi, I'm Isaac, I cry, I have a cat, I can't really groom myself very well, and I, wear, I have like bad choice in fashion. 100 million people saw that, right? So be you, don't worry about what other people are gonna think. Inspire people with your video. Make them understand what it is that inspired you to do, and I'm sorry my voice is cracking, I'm starting to get a little sick, I think. Inspired you, to do what it is that you do. If you build websites, if you're a graphic designer, remember what it was that got you excited, and that's what you want to do for other people. Inspire them to reach the potential that you can help them get. It's not carry them, it's inspire them. Remember Yoda, not Luke. It's not about you. You're not the hero of the story. And then once you've storyboarded or you've planned out the video, you kind of have an idea, you want to really ask yourself at the end, before you even start recording, would I even share this? Ask your friends if they would share the video that you're describing. Because so many times we're so ingrained in what we're doing and we're so into what we're doing that we forget, like, maybe this isn't a really funny video. It's just funny because it's me and my kids, right? You just never know. Ask for advice. Ask other people what they think of your concept. And take a look and see what they say. Don't take it personally if they tell you, like, this isn't right. This is kind of off. They're being honest with you. There's so many more reasons I wouldn't have posted it than that. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> like, I'll, and I'll, I'll get into a little bit of how crazy it is. Like, I will tell you, like, when you post a video and you start to go, has anyone thought about what it'd be like to go viral? I did. I'll be honest with you. It's crazy. Like, I posted this on a Tuesday at 8 o'clock at night. Wednesday, Arizona News came out. Like, the local news agency, like, messaged me on Facebook. Um, hey, we want to do an interview. You were there. Like, I was freaking out, right? I'm into Scottsdale. I, I, we I have an office in Scottsdale. I live in Gilbert. So I'm over there, like, trying to answer, like, is this real? Is this phishing? Um, I don't know. Like, how did you find me is what I was also thinking. Uh, I tell one na news agency, yeah, you can come out and interview uh, us. When I get home, I do that interview. And then a, an SUV pulls in. There's a guy in a suit just like you, right? Wasn't, wasn't as dapper, but in a suit. <laughs> and he comes walking up. He goes, I'm looking for Isaac Irvine. Again, I'm thinking I'm getting served with papers or something, right? <laughs> And he goes, I want to talk to you about your viral video. I'm from channel 12. I'm like, bro, like channel 3 just left, and they have a nice van. What happened? Like, are you the B team? Because I'm, I get it. I'm, I'm like the B team, too. This isn't a great video either. I don't, my hair's all wrong. Um, but that's what it was. So they came out. I was on the news that night. Thursday, I get to work, and people are like, I saw you on Yahoo's, fr like the front page of CNN and Yahoo. And I was like, why do you still go to Yahoo, right? <laughs> right? Is that not the first thing you thought when I said it? Because I'm still, like, I know who it is. Like, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to, like, embarrass him like that. But I was like, did you go to Yahoo? Is, is that around? But I was on CNN and Yahoo. Uh, and then that was on Thursday. It's like having a full-time job. It's outside of your regular full-time job because you're answering media requests. People are messaging you. Everybody wants to be your friend. Uh, you're going to get lots of people that want to give you advice about Teflon tape and also about how many tattoos you have and every life choice that you've ever made. 
trust me, they, they, they're very passionate. Um, and so for, that was Thursday. By Friday, I get the email, like, Ellen, an email from Ellen. And I'll show it to you. It says don't show anybody, but I'll show you. Uh, and that was cool because you're like, oh, do the Ellen show. Rad. Again, I don't have TV, but Ellen, I know who Ellen is, right? I call her, and we do, like, this, this pre-interview, and then she calls uh, it's first day of spring break. She calls my wife. My, my kids are off, like, hiking over on Hieroglyph Trail, if you're familiar with that. It's not really hard, but they're 10, so it's challenging. And uh, they get Bonnie on the phone. And then my wife calls me and says, we're definitely not going on Ellen. I was like, what happened? Bodie just talked about how, she, how he wants to push Aiden off of a trail because he was walking in front of him. That's your Ellen interview. You just talked about how you want to, like, push your brother off a mountain. So we didn't go on Ellen. But it was a really cool story to tell, and I'll show you the email if you want to see it. It's fun. So when you start to go viral, what this is is breathe. Like, I was a hot mess in Atlanta that year. Like, just, it was just last year. Um, it, the, the video just broke, and you see, you get a lot of this. Like, you're in, I came back to the hotel, I'm in the elevator, and you see a lot of this. <laughs> right? And you're like, I'm right here. Right? Like, I see you. Come on over. Let's do this, right? Let's take a picture. That, that stuff, it's really weird because people will act like you're a little bit celebrity. And you're not. You're just, I'm just a dad with a lot of tattoos that does not use Teflon tape, and I listen to my son. But we all related to it, right? We all wanted him to do as good as I did. So when you start to go viral, when your video starts to pick up steam, when you start to see it in places that aren't your friends, just breathe. Just pause and breathe, because it is you're in for a, a ride that is amazing, terrifying, and out of control. But just breathe, reply to comments, think about why you're doing this, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Know the signs that your video is starting to go viral. So the number one thing I can tell you is if you have a, a video that you want to post, post it natively on the social platform where you're at. If you post a video to YouTube and then link it to Facebook, Facebook is automatically going to ding that post because each post, the easiest way to understand is, is you post on Facebook, that post has like a score, let's say 10. And you look at shares, shares add say 10 points to, I don't know what the algorithm is, but this helps me understand it and I'm not good at math. So I'm going to use easy numbers. If your post starts at 10 and you get a share, maybe it adds 10 points. Every single share adds another 10 points. So after your, after your post starts to pick up extra points, Facebook says, people like this, let's show more people. And if you start getting con likes, shares, comments, reactions, each one of these are weighted differently. It starts here. Shares is everything. Comments are the next most important. Reactions are the last. So each one of those has a point value that will then assign to your post. The higher the, the number goes, the more people are going to see your video or your post that you don't know. It's just part of that algorithm. So when you start looking, I would tell you, does everyone have a Facebook business page for your business? If you don't, come talk to me. I'll show you how to do it. It's totally free. You need to do it because this is how you can actually boost and track video. And so what happens is you start seeing your video do really well. You start seeing a lot of, a lot of comments, likes, shares. And then the holy grail is how long did someone watch a video? So my original video was three minutes long. Nobody's going to watch that whole three minutes. I'm just going to be honest with you. Like, no one has that time. If you can make your video one minute or less, in fact, if you've seen the video, unless you watched the original one where the cat knocks over shampoo, you watched a one-minute video because BuzzFeed, George Takai, Dot Mike. All of them understand this, and they all make your video. They change it from 16 by 9 to a square so they can fit it on other social media, and they keep it under a minute. So the longer somebody watches, the average watch time will also boost. So on a, on a Facebook business page, you can look at the, your insights, and you look at your stats, and look at how long someone watched your video. Three seconds counts as a view, but you can look at the average watch time. On my original video, it was, it was about 78% of the video. So that was pretty good. As it got shorter, as someone cut it up, people were watching about 
48 seconds of the, the entire like 60 seconds, which is pretty good. That also helped. And then when you look at how many people have viewed it, we'll say 100,000. And you have 50,000 engagement. So it's half, right? That's pretty good. At that point, I would say put some money behind it and boost it. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, when you with, with ours, it was like the stats were ridiculous. So it was happening without any boosting or anything like that. But boosting is what's going to help you get your video in front of other people without likes, shares, and reactions. If you got traction on your video, you see that those stats where your views are, are high and your, your engagement is high as well, at least 50% or more, then I'm going to tell you, like, boost the video. Is anyone not familiar with boosting? Because I'll go a little bit deeper. If No? Couple? Okay. In a nutshell, you pay Facebook, you tell them a target, and this, this is where I start usually. Don't spend more than $1 a day on your Facebook boosting. Please don't spend more than a dollar. It's going to get in there. It's going to suggest like 8 bucks. Do it $1 a day. So put $7 when it asks you how much you want to spend. $7 for seven days. That's it. And you're probably going to stop your video or your post about two days in. So you'll spend about 2 bucks because you're going to know everything you need to know out of that two days, out of the $2. So the key to this is targeting. So what I would do, because I'm not trying to capitalize on, on our video, right? If this was something that was business-like, I would say, yeah, let me get in there and I'm going to start making a business out of this. One thing I'm not, I'm a dad, right? I am a dad. I'm not a bully expert. In fact, thank you, Internet. I figured out that, like, my son wasn't bullied. He was picked on. Technicalities. So I'm not trying to capitalize or jumpstart a business or be known as the bully dad. Because to me, that would have felt a lot exploitive to, to like our situation. And honestly, I don't know anything about bullying. So I can't stand up here and say this about bullying and this about bullying and start a bullying, like an anti-bullying forum for anything, right? Because I, you, you'd see through it. Like it wouldn't be real. It wouldn't be me. So what I would do, because I believed in the message of it, if... Somebody would share my video, like George Takai, CNN, um, Dot Mike, BuzzFeed. What I would do is I would take their video from their, their page, share it to my public figure page, say thanks for sharing, and then I would boost and target that video to news outlets, anyone that had a job title that was investigative journalist, journalist, reporter, uh, if they worked at King World, CNN, any of the major news outlets. Um, like talk shows, Good Morning America, all of it. So what this did was people that may not have seen the video originally would see CNN, Dot Mike, BuzzFeed. Th my video would show up in their, in their feed, and they're like, CNN's covering this. What do I need to cover today? This is news. I'll cover this. So then they cover it. Well, guess what? As soon as they shared it, I would reshare it to my, my page, put a dollar behind it, let it boost for a couple days. More reporters would see it. It's getting shared more often. And that's, I started doing that at about, I think it was about 60 million views, and that's where it bumped up to 100. Was just doing this, just saying thanks. Cost me about $14, right? How much do y'all spend on marketing in last year, right? How much do you think businesses, um, how much do you think businesses spend in marketing a year? It's ridiculous. But you can do it. Engage with comments. This, this is something you can do regardless. Always engage with comments. Give me, let me finish this thought and I'll grab you. Um, what it is, if you, anyone ever tweet like a, a celebrity or a big brand, do you expect a reply, honestly, in your heart of hearts? No. No way. In fact, if you get a reply, you're like, do you reply and you screenshot it and share that out. Like, check it out. Like Daryl from like Walking Dead replied to me. That's crazy. So. What happens is if you reply, people start to, like, they'll pull for you because you're an underdog. You're doing something no one else is doing. So if you were to tweet at Toyota and be like, that was a cool ad, and they're like, hey, thanks. What? <laughs> right? They, they, no one does that. So it humanizes your brand by having you reply. So, so when you see stuff like this, spend time to reply and engage. <laughs> like, if someone says something, I say thanks. Like, appreciate your comment. You know, and then the other things you want to do is you want to make sure you avoid trolls. 
you'll get that a lot. I got the the worst one, and it's hard. I'll be I'll be real frank. It's super hard because some, especially when when it's your, my son, right? Like someone will comment, like, "No wonder that kid's getting picked on. Look at his dad." And like, he probably doesn't have a job, right? <laughs> That's what I did. I was like, "Ooh, ooh, <laughs> ooh," right? So the only reply I had was like, "I have a job. They kind of like me a little bit, and it's pretty cool." And then that was it. Like, shut it down. They didn't come back at me again. But it's hard because you see someone commenting about my kid. For me, it was my son. For you, it's going to be your product or your service, right? You love that as much as your family. Put enough heart. You put the same heart and soul into it. Um, Want to grab your questions if you. So what what'll do you when you boost your, your video, it'll give you an option to target. And when you do target, am I doing something wrong? Oh, okay. Okay, I thought I was in trouble. Um, when, you when, you, when you go to Boost, it's going to ask you what your target is, and you just make a new group. You call it whatever you want, whoever you're targeting. I would say small. If it's like I'm, I'm a website designer, I'm building sites, I would look for brand new sites. I would look for, look for things other people aren't. Look for, like, if you want to go for, a, like, a niche, like newlyweds, someone that just got engaged, I'll help you build a, a wedding site. If you're a graphic designer, I'll help you make your your uh, uh, your invitations on Facebook. Yeah, it's scary. Th Facebook has more info on you than the NSA. And we just gave, we here, take it. Yeah, where do you work? Where do you go to school? What do you do? Did you get a promotion? Tell us about it, right? And we do. We just give it right to them. So engage with, engage with all your comments. And then don't take yourself seriously because it's, you will go nuts because it's, it's moments like when you've, like, is this anyone's first word camp or first conference? Yeah? Think about how tired, are you at least a little bit overwhelmed and tired right now? Think about how you feel at the end of the day and you're in an, you're in an elevator and someone wants to take a picture of you. Right? You can't take yourself seriously. You're just going to go, like, do that, do that, and at least you can go, like, I had control over it. You know what I mean? Because if not, you're like, congeniality, like, did you get it? Super, like a super face, I don't know, maybe you guys don't fake smiles. I do it all the time. Don't take it seriously. Strangers think they know you. That's going to be weird because you're going to walk into client meetings and they're going to start talking to you like your besties if you've done a really heartfelt video. You've done something that they enjoyed. They're going to feel like they know you. It's a little weird, but it's cool. They're your friend. Um, the celebrity isn't real. Don't believe that. So your video, if, if you start to see the typical trends will start to take off, you're doing really well, and it'll just die out just like every other post. It just It's a little bit longer of a cycle. Um, you'll know it's like it's a viral type thing if you see it like go, and then you start to go, okay, I can relax now, I can relax. I don't have to look at pictures of me like looking super chubby and, and bending over in a really bad position holding my phone wrong. And then it gets shared again, and you're like, oh, I had one weekend off. I was so excited. And it was about three months into the video. I'm like, we're doing something fun today. I, I was so excited. I can't even tell you. I wake up and like I get in, I get, uh, the first notice says, "Dude, you're famous again, right?" Everyone else is super excited. I'm like, "What? What? What?" Saturday, it's a Saturday. I open it up and George Takai shared the video. Again, super cool. It's not, this isn't like a humble brag. What it, to me, what it was was now I have to reply and read a thousand comments because I want to know what people are saying about me and my son. Like I can't just ignore those comments, right? I have to stay on top of it. So it's gonna go like this and. The celebrity of, of it all is not real. Don't believe your own hype. It's a roller coaster ride. I think I've kind of covered that, right? It's, it's up and down. It's left and right. You're going to have people that love you, people that want to talk, talk about you like you're not there. It's just weird, but it's okay. It's your business. You control what you are going to say to your audience. You have that control. Make sure that it lands and make sure that it's something that they can relate to. Look at your audience. Look what they like of your content, right? You're not going to have multiple viral videos, but look at the content that you post that they like and give them more of that. I think it's, that's, it's about as basic as it gets. But if you notice uh, that you're posting something and it's, you're targeting a specific audience or there's something in there that people find endearing or they like, do more of that instead of trying to fight and do something different. And then if you don't remember anything else, like we kind of touched on this, 
in anything in life, whether it's this, whether it's your business, whether it's when you go to make that jump into I'm going to make a video, I'm going to hire an employee, I'm going to take this contract that maybe puts me out of my comfort zone, there's going to be a little voice that says, you got this. But there's a voice over here we choose to listen to more that says, you can't do that. You're crazy. Like, everyone's going to laugh at you. 100 million people are going to see you in this tank top, right? It's lying. Don't believe your detractors, especially your own. Don't get in, the w don't get in your own way. So to recap, when you shoot video and when you're making your video and you're talking about your product, the first thing you have to do is be 100% real or else we're going to notice that you're not and we're not going to believe you. Don't hold yourself to an impossible standard because you're never going to meet it and you're never going to do what you want to accomplish. You're just going to stop because you're going to talk yourself out of it. And if I would have talked myself out of it to answer your question, like would I not have posted? I would not have had this opportunity with my son. I wouldn't have had the opportunity to grow. We wouldn't have this opportunity to, to talk and share our story and hear about how other people are, have done the donation for their hair and stories from other kids that are sick. Like everything that I've been through and all the, the weird, uh, you know, self-conscious stuff that this brought out in me, <laughs> uh, it's, it's one of those things that I, I would do it again in a heartbeat because of the, the story that got attached to it, the bigger story. Again, it's not about me and my son. It's about the kids that were inspired by what he had to say. It's about the parents to take a moment to listen to their kids a little bit more. So I've got about two minutes so I can answer maybe two questions, but I will be at the GoDaddy booth after, and you can come by and I'll talk to everybody. What kind of conversations did you have with your family in terms of whether to let this go viral, like feed the beast, or like at what point it's like, hey, what kind of conversations do you have? Um, I mean, f like, first of all, like, Bodhi has no idea because he doesn't have Facebook or anything like that. Like, we'll be at the zoo or something, and someone will want to, like, so far in person, in, in, in the human to human, people are really cool. They're like, hey, are you the, are you the guy from the video? And you're like, yeah. Can, can I give your son a high five? Absolutely. Um, but as far as, like, social media, he has no idea. Like, I, I completely, like, I don't even look at my phone around him. Um, so he has no idea other than, like, Somebody want to talk to me about because I almost cut my hair. You know, he, he just doesn't, he doesn't get it. So that's the conversation we had was like, you know, do, do we want to even expose him to it? No. Because like well, at the height of this, if you Googled his name, he's, he's eight years old. The first seven pages of, of Google was just video, video, video. Like he didn't exist before <laughs> this, right? And so now he's got the first seven pages of Google. Like you're set, dude. Like to someone types in your name, you're cool. You're golden like your whole life. But I'm very concerned that he's always going to be the bullied kid. So, like, d I don't have the answer to the end of that because I'm very nervous about what it's going to be like for him living up in the shadow of, like, I was a kid who was bullied. Does that make sense? But I haven't crossed that road yet. I don't know. So, and there was one question over here. No? Yes. Hi. So... It's on. You just got to put so it So my area of expertise is teaching people where AI and humans interact. Uh -huh. um, so when I talk to clients, I say in the human world and then in the computer world. Um, so we have this interloper, and you had talked about algorithms. I was hoping you'd share a little bit more about the um, algorithms because we can be as authentic as we can be. I can tell you I'm not relatable. I'm going to need bots. I yeah. mean, I've been doing this for 20 years. I worked at Disney. I'm not relatable, but what I have to say is relatable. Am I right. making sense? Absolutely. And that's where an algo can come in, and an algo. So could you speak a little bit more about the bots and the algo? I, I didn't use bots or anything like that, so I couldn't, I couldn't give you it. Like, to, for me, I'd have to say I don't know um, because I didn't look at that part of it. Um, so I would just be throwing something out just to appease you because we're videotaping it, but I don't know. Um, I would tell you, test it. That's the, like the, the point of that one was like, give them what they want. Try a bot. If it works and you're converting, then cool. And then if it's not, try, I mean, just try. If, it, if you're comfortable replying and, and, and doing that connection human to human over, over a computer versus face to face, then, then try it if you're comfortable with it. If not, if you're not comfortable, like do whatever it takes. Okay. So that's it. I, I have, that's my one minute warning. So I'm going to, Head out. I'll be over at the GoDaddy booth, though. I'll just hang out behind there. If you want to talk, ask questions, want to know more about anything, I'll be over there hanging out. So thanks for coming to my talk.
I love you all.